Hello, my name is Laura Valtorta, and we're here with episode eight of B is for Bisexual. This story is called Christmas Party, and it's about two characters, Dash and Wendy, who are a couple, an unusual couple, not what you'd expect. Reading with me here today are Marco Valtorta, a computer scientist, and Dante Valtorta, a musician. Please remember to watch Bermuda, my fiction comedy film on Amazon and Tubi. And now, Christmas party. I met Wendy at Marta's Christmas party, and naturally, she was with another woman, one of Don Staley's basketball players. Marta's Christmas party was by and for lesbians which is why they always attracted about 150 people in that tiny house. Columbia, South Carolina was full of lesbians with nowhere to go. Marcus and I were one of the token gay couples there. We were having a fight because he was seeing one of his clients. When I first spotted Wendy, I thought she was the more elegant and beautiful of the two women in her couple, tall and skinny like a vanilla bean, black skin, cotton candy, pink shirt. She had her hair done freely in an unruly afro. I thought I could do better with it. Her hair was so thick and lush. Her date, Ashley, was just too tall and with no style whatsoever. I mean, who wears jeans and a plaid shirt to a Christmas celebration? Okay, most of the hillbilly lesbians at that party wore the same uniform. At least Wendy had the sense to put on some color. As a hairdresser, I needed to meet a certain standard. I wore a silk magenta tuxedo and really stood out. Hey, I'm Dash. What do you do? I asked Wendy. I was no threat to women, not with my prissy demeanor, so I felt they could go right up to her and ask. Wendy glared at me. I design computer games. I'm rich. All righty, then. I did a wonderful Jim Carrey impersonation. You know, you can marry me and support me. I want to give up doing hair and open a bookstore cafe. No way, stupid. I realized that Wendy was not one to stand on ceremony. You're not getting my dough. Nobody reads books anymore. What about your boyfriend over there? Can't he support you? Marcus was flirting with a married football coach by the fireplace. He was throwing his scarf over the man's head and giggling. Eh, he's not my boyfriend. Not anymore. You know, he fucked one of his clients. Uh, he's a personal trainer. You have terrible taste, said Wendy, for a good-looking white guy. I felt my eyes popping out. Nobody had ever called me good-looking because I'm too skinny for a guy. I have nice hair, shaved on the sides and floppy blonde on top, but the rest of me is pale as a ghost. Wendy smiled and walked toward the cake table. I followed her. One of the reasons we connected, I think, is that we're both too skinny. I invited her home that night, and she didn't even ask permission from the basketball player. Wendy was tough that way, did what she wanted. I loved that about her from the beginning. We ditched the lesbian party and headed straight for my loft. Come with me, I said. We make a beautiful cup. We did it on the futon at my apartment, the first time since high school I'd made love to a woman. She was built like a broomstick, with pinprick breasts and glamorous long legs that I wanted to stroke. Her hair and the blackness of her skin drove me crazy. The sex felt surprisingly natural. I thought she liked it, but I couldn't really tell. She lay on the futon for a while with her eyes closed. Then she sat up, walked to the closet, and began trying on my clothes. One of the reasons I hadn't saved up a lot of money from doing hair was that I spent it all on clothes. Wendy opened the closet and went wild. The first thing she tried on was a pajama outfit, short pajamas for outdoors, and I felt like she jumped off the pages of Vogue magazine. She strutted up and down, and my apartment turned into a one-way. Then she tried on my capes, my scarves, and my six pairs of fluorescent Nike sneakers. 
My shoes fit her. Size 10. Come on, baby. I said. Let me do your hair. We drove to my salon, and I opened up the doors just for her. My co-worker, Ravana the Witch, was not there on a Sunday. I have some co-wash and conditioner I want to try on you. I said. She was still wearing my designer silk pajamas. She leaned her head backwards into the sink and washing her hair felt sensuous rather than simply a job. I massaged her head for a long time. I used extra conditioner. My goal was to trim Wendy's hair and pull it into puffy balls on top of her head, flattening the sides. Her hair was long enough for that after I smoothed it out with water and conditioner. Her hair might have looked gorgeous, but I was too busy admiring her face, the mouth, the cheeks. So, tell me about your family. I said, there's too many of them. Will they mind you dating a white guy? They might. If I were dating some dude, I usually bring home a girl. I considered this. You can call it whatever you want. My family is a mean bunch of Republicans. I have to warn you. She stared at the many rings on my hands and my fashionably ripped jeans. You're wearing a rainbow t-shirt and a headband, she said. How can your family be Republican? You can say all the style in the family came to me. I said, indicating my clothing. Actually, I think it helps when your mother gets pregnant with you when she's 18. You drain all the smarts out of her body. Where is this bookstore you lust after? Oh, come with me. I'll show you. There was an empty storefront next door, not too large, where I could see my imaginary bookstore cafe stretching into the back with shelves of books on romance and fashion. The rent is 1500 a month, I told her. Sell your condo, she said, and move into my place. I have a house in Rosewood. We went to visit her house. It was a bungalow with two large bedrooms and a screened-in porch. I admired the fireplace and the vegetable garden. The beauty of game designs, Wendy said, is that I spend a lot of time at home working on the back porch and chasing the squirrels away from my kitchen garden. I've even got a blueberry bush. What do the baseball players think of this place? She thought I could do better. She wanted to move to L.A. or some fancy place like Europe. I can't do that. My family's right here. Dread rose in my heart. Besides the thought of my family, which was straight out of, of deliverance, I was more afraid of her family, who might conceive or figure out or simply divine that my family was racist. They could probably smell it on me without even talking to my monster truck-loving sister or my potato-head dad. Yeah, my family won't like you. I said, who gives a shit? But I really like you. I kissed her mouth and felt the leanness of her body and thought, this could really work. This was what I wanted, not some bimbo trainer who worked out at a gym and not some dumpling white girl who did cheerleading. This beanpole high fashion woman was more my size. She brought out her Macintosh computer and we looked at the game she was working on, roller derby pigs. It was the kind of game I wouldn't mind my own children playing. Pigs of different styles and colors raced around the track and tried to bump each other off. I chose a tall green pig and named him Rufus. He had the height but not the width to knock away some of the other pigs. Wendy chose a spotted, spotted black pig named Charlie, who was wide enough to get past me and win. The secret, she told me, is to choose the right player and go second. If your opponent chooses tall and green, you'd do better with short and black. Yup. I said. She was wearing some sort of Moroccan oil on her hands that smelled delicious. I rubbed her back. So you say we're not dating. I said. But let's do it again. She went into her bedroom and I followed. There were lots of posters on her wall. Maxine Waters, Shirley Chisholm, Michelle Obama, plus Fidel Castro and Che Guevara. I didn't know who most of those people were until Wendy explained it to me later. The walls themselves were painted black. 
we got naked on top of the quilt. I wanted to spend a lot of time looking at her body, especially her legs, but things didn't work that way. The sex was overpowering. As soon as we were finished, she put on her clothes and closed her eyes. Man, you have a beautiful body. I told her. Wendy stuck out her tongue. Wrong. Both of us are toad ugly, she said. No, no, you're wrong. Bet you we could win a couple's beauty contest. I said. You, me, dressed in my wardrobe. You have to get over what the stupid kids said to you in middle school. Kindergarten, middle school, high school. What about college? Wendy punched me. We spent the rest of the evening reviewing her latest games. They had a farmyard nature theme and were designed for kids who wanted action but no real violence. My favorite game was flying geese. The birds built nests, searched for food, and pooped on playgrounds for the right to leave the Chudron to the best nesting area. It was fun and took some real skill. I made $50,000 on that one, she told me. I guess majoring in computer science at Midlands Tech was worth it. She had studied two years there before transferring to the university. Wendy was in a higher class than me. My parents wouldn't even pay for college. I told her. So I did the next best thing, beauty school. Was it fun? I loved it, actually. But I've always wanted to study American literature. You know, John Grisham, Peyton Place, that kind of stuff. Hmm. Why don't you take a class or two before you open your bookstore? Wendy was right. The classes in American literature at the University of South Carolina led me to fall in love with Ann Tyler and Margaret Atwood. My taste climbed up a notch or two. Plus, I met real college kids and realized I was often smarter than they were. They didn't read people very well. All they could see was a funny guy who did people's hair. They never met Wendy, the cooler side of me. They never knew I was a fashionable guy with responsibility. We waited about a year before meeting each other's families. We waited and waited. My friends loved Wendy, especially Marcus, once he realized he didn't have to be exclusive with me anymore. My relationship with Wendy allowed Marcus and me to become friends without the weight of a relationship. Wendy's basketball friends just wanted to take off over my hair salon, smoke weed, and talk about the latest wigs and relaxing treatments. You ladies need to let your hair go natural. I was always fussing at them. Then Ashley, one of the basketball women, would stand up and mess with my hair. We don't have white boy hair like you, Dash. We have to relax it to make it grow long. You ladies are crazy. I told them. Look at the splendor of my girlfriend. None of them would believe that Wendy had the best hair of all. But I could see it because I read Vogue and Vanity Fair. And because I had eyes. Ravana the witch didn't last long in that environment. She came in one weekend unexpectedly. I didn't know we specialized in black hair. She said, crossing her arms. Please, you need to get real. I told her. I want you to meet Wendy. Ravana eyed her up and down and said nothing. Ravana, I need you to leave. I said, and that was the end of a five-year working relationship. It took her about 15 minutes to gather up her combs and hair dryers. She stole a couple of bottles of shampoo and I said nothing. When Ravana closed the door behind her, the basketball women cheered and screamed. Good riddance, bitch. We didn't like your stringy hair either. The acceptance of the basketball women felt wonderful. So did my friendship with Marcus. But Wendy and I still couldn't face our parents. My dad is old-fashioned, said Wendy. He never really knew that I dated women. <laughs> my mother has a kitchen decorated with ducks wearing ribbons. I explained. Her favorite music is Kenny Rogers. This is going to be so hard, said Wendy, especially when they all find out that I'm pregnant. My face broke into a smile involuntarily. <sighs> For real? I said I put my hand on her belly. I'm five months along, she said. 
With her tall body, she looked as though she wasn't pregnant at all. I knew about humongous pregnant bellies from my work at the salon. You're joking. The hope of having a child of my own naturally had never really entered my mind. I always pictured me and my and a boyfriend having to adopt a kid from China or searching for a surrogate mother. This is so surreal. Our baby's going to be funny looking, said Wendy. Are you kidding me? She's going to be prettier than Naomi Campbell and smarter than President Obama. We decided that Wendy's parents had to be told first. It was getting close to Thanksgiving. Everyone would be crowded into her mother's backyard for a barbecue. I suggest we go to your house first. And then, and then we wait for Halloween to visit my parents, obviously. They're always in costume anyway. Christmas at your place, said Wendy. Thanksgiving at the Anabinette house was a nightmare, like working as a freak at a circus. I decided to wear my usual magenta silk suit. Wendy put on white flowered overalls and a striped head rag. Both of us looked ridiculous among her relatives, most of them who were very tall and good looking and wearing jeans. Everybody stared at me and looked at her and began talking about church. We know Wendy's pregnant. Her mother, Rose, said when we first walked into the back porch. Who all is the father? Shut up, Mama, said Wendy. This is Dash, the father of my baby. Everybody, the aunts and uncles and little cousins, oohed and odd and stared at me. Her father walked out. He was about six feet seven inches tall. When are you all going to get married? <laughs> Never. I said. Unless Wendy wants to walk down the aisle for fun. I'm against organized religion. Wendy's father frowned. I was betting on the Anabinet family spirit to come through. It seemed like they all loved Wendy. If they wanted to see our baby, they were going to have to get through me. She was the only daughter in the family. The rest of the party went okay. I even talked to Wendy's three brothers who laughed too much at me and some of her cousins. My family was a piece of fruitcake after that even though my aunts, cousins, and uncles look like a KKK rally. My dad, who has a head like a potato, could not really get over how good-looking Wendy was and that she was with me. This your girlfriend? He asked. Yes, Dad. Well, I'll be. He shook Wendy's hand and stared at her for an hour. My mother's only concern was the thought of being a grandmother. All of her best friends had grandchildren. She asked a few dumb questions about the baby's color. My younger sister was away at Yellowstone studying to be a park ranger. Tiffany says she's never going to have kids, lamented my mother. Do you think I could babysit sometime? Wendy and I thought it would be okay. After these two parties, all we had to do was work and go to the doctor and wait for the baby. My apartment money was half set aside for family savings. I still lacked additional money for my bookstore. After the university classes, I needed to rethink about what books I would order. Wendy said she would lend me money for a fancy coffee machine, but both of us were practical and did not think it was smart to stop doing hair until the bookstore was earning a profit. I could hire some of my new college friends to make coffee and sell books. There would be an entire section on children's books, I decided. We sat at the screened-in porch and dreamed about the future. The end.